Hello everybody and welcome back to my Let's Play. Um, I do apologize for yesterday, I didn't put up an episode as I didn't get enough time to record. Um, so, gonna, I've got a bit of uh, time today so I'm going to do a couple of episodes and that way I've got a bit of a buffer so hopefully it shouldn't happen again. Um, so, uh, we... where were we? Um, Yes, uh, last time I talked about the ship, the ship's menu and the um, commander's menu. Um, so, I'm just thinking if there's anything else. I um, haven't really thought about what I'm going to be talking about this episode apart from just running through. Oh, construction factory is completed. And the, our Mel one of our Melbourne class is done. So... I'll just throw out another one. There we go. Good. Um, da -da 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 -da. Oh, but there's a laser sh laser gun boat, so that's good. Um, I'm just gonna have to adjust the cargo group. So you know what? While I'm here, might as well talk about the uh, task group screen. Considering this is where probably most people are going to spend most of their time. So, <clears throat> let's just set this to run. So the task group screen is where you basically control mo a good portion of your empire. So one is the productions and all of that, the other one is the task groups. So um, obviously, this will have your empire selected. Um, the only reason this drop-down exists is because you can get more options in SM and designer mode. Um, but for the most part, it'll just have your selected. This is, of course, the task group that you're working with, and it will give a list of all the task groups that are part of your empire, except for the civilian ones. Um, if you, uh, Designer mode actually allows you to have civilian task groups listed so if you have access to that um, you will be able to manage those um, if you don't have access to designer mode then you'll have to do to get rid of civilian shipping the old-fashioned way dropping missiles in their flood path um, this of course determines what task force that the task group is part of and the location of which system is currently in that's all fairly straightforward reload size excellent um, so the survey points bar shows how many survey points for gravitational and geological that the task group generates per uh, day, I believe. Let's check that real quick. Grab an explorer. Yeah, per day. Um, this is, of course, adjust. Uh, no, that'll be per hour. This is, of course, adjusted for um, commander bonuses as well. Um, this is your ship speed, of course, uh, or the task force speed. The maximum speed is determined by the slowest ship in the task group. Um, and if you're in a nebula, it will, of course, potentially be reduced. It'll have a little TN next to the number to tell you that it's um, being forced to a slower rate. Um, you can manually, so this one is determined based on your ships. This one will manually change the speed away from your uh, maximum, which is normally what it's set to. So you type in the speed and you hit set, and that will set the speed for the task force. If you hit max, it will just set it to this. Um, the center map will tell your map to track it and show ground, will show any um, ground forces that are loaded on there. Uh, obviously I have none, so that doesn't do anything. Um, I'll cover initiative in a slightly different section, but here you can set the initiative of your group. Um, the maximum one, of course, is determined by the initiative of your ships. Um, senior officer is the most senior officer for the entire task force and the one that is, is effectively leading it. Um, you have your orders display, which will tell, tell you how far the task force has to travel and how long it has to fly for to get there. So if you know the range of your ships, um, this will give you an idea of whether 
uh, but you'll need refueling along the way. Current is for the next plotted move. All orders will give you a total summary of all the moves in order. Um, I'm, don't, I'm not sure whether it accounts for planetary movements, um, but um, it'll, at the very least it'll give you a rough estimate, so um, that's fine. Um, this is, of course, filtering for task groups and the actual orders as well. Uh, you've got your... Uh, oh, we've got some progress. Civilian mining. That's fine. So, with special orders and organization. So, this will basically let you automate your task groups a little bit more. Um, with these, um, it will basically let you spread your ships out a little bit so you can have one task group here and then another one like 300,000 kilometers ahead acting as point defense so you have um, gunships that can shoot down missiles so that uh, the, the main benefit of that is that uh, for example if you have your gunships uh, your point defense gunships sitting inside the fleet then you get half uh, then you get the range of your of those guns to shoot down missiles whereas if you have them sitting ahead of the fleet then those missiles part crossing through them um, so you get double the effective fire range of those guns half while they're closing towards you and half while they're retreating towards it away from you towards the target so and you can also set it to um, for example have ships that cover the sides um, or move your more vulnerable ships to the rear. Um, there's plenty of things you can do with it. Um, by default, um, four front or zero degrees uh, will be t uh, in the direction the task group is traveling. However, if you have a hostile contact, you can have select one from this drop down menu and that will um, cause front to be towards that task group. Um, and then you have which task group um, the positioning will be relative to, the distance from that task group, and which direction based on this um, it will sit uh, against. Uh, we'll just go set research to keep going with the extra lab. There we go. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Uh, default orders will basically tell the ship to do certain things, so survey nearest various uh, objects, uh, next survey location is of course jump points. Um, actually, I'm not going to be able to do these drop downs while it's running in the background, so we'll just wait for it to finish. Um, you can tell it to combine with another task group, in other words, merge with another task group that is in the same location. Um, you can also set a superior formation. If you go to a, su a superior formation, you can have it copy orders or copy the default orders, um, even match speeds. Um, so that way it gives you a little bit more control. So if you have, say, six different um, task groups that have to sit separately from one another, um, you can have them all go to the same location. Um, this is fantastic for doing group survey missions. So you would have them split off into independent ships and then give the default orders of survey or whatever um, and just copy them directly. Um, so it comes in really handy. And, and if you have fast ships that need to slow down to keep up with the slower one, um, you can also match speed. So it comes in handy. All right, so we've got to stop due to uh, civilian mine colony expansion. So we'll just cover the drop downs. So you've got the survey to nearest, so you've got the various survey ones. These are fairly straightforward. You click it and then it just runs. Uh, follow higher fleet in system will tell, uh, it will tell the ship to follow um, any fleet that it's a subordinate of. Uh, move to entry jump point will tell it to go to where, uh, whatever jump point it entered the system through. Uh, refuel current system, fairly straightforward. Load colonists at plus 25 and... Uh, load colony of the capital. Um, this one is what civilian shipping uses, uh, as is this one, to a degree, because they can also do it at above 25, depending on how you set the colony. Um, and load colony of the capital, uh, these are all fairly straightforward. Build a jump gate in the nearest jump point. This will allow you to effect, functionally uh, automate your jump point, cons jump gate construction vessels. Um, fairly straightforward. 
uh, a little bit of caution to be used, and it's, uh, essentially uh, the only caution you need to be aware of is that it will make a jump point at all the jump gates, and if you want to keep certain jump gates locked off, um, you obviously don't want that. Uh, pick up automated mine from population and deliver automated mine to mining colony allows you to uh, a little bit automate your um, mine delivery, mine deliveries. Um, I'm not sure if these civilian mining colonies count, but the automated mining colonies. So if so, all you have to do is drop one automated mine uh, manually, or use civilian shipping, and then any freighters with that order will automatically take automated mines from anywhere else and dump them onto these automated mining colonies. So um, can really come in handy with, with that with, for your freighters if you just have so many mines being built, built especially if they're from different places as well. So these two work for that. Uh, move to nearest trade location where is essentially what the civilians use. Um, they will essentially pick up um, trade goods. I'm not sure if they actually will pick up trade goods though, because yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, unload passengers fairly straightforward. Um, basically, if they have any passengers, they'll go and dump them wherever they um, feel like it. Uh, move to mineral source is handy for asteroid miners. They will automatically go to a uh, source of minerals and start mining. Um, this is extremely useful because once the mine, once the colony runs dry, then they'll automatically move on to the next one. You won't have to tell them to go uh, to the next mine. Um, so th this will be extremely useful if you have, say, a large fleet that has to quickly move from asteroid to asteroid and you don't particularly care about where it's actually mining. Um, this one here, exact same thing, except for... Uh, gas giants for Sorium. So this, so you would use this for your harvester fleet. Uh, salvage nearest wreck, obviously for your salvage ships, and terraform colony will um, uh, probably go to any colony that has um, terraforming instructions. Um, so that can come in handy. Um, secondary orders are all identical. Not It doesn't have, obviously have all of them. I think it's missing a few. Maybe? Um, but essentially, uh, if it can't fulfill the primary order, it will do the secondary order and it'll also stop the game to tell you that it is. So uh, keep in mind the secondary orders, it will uh, cause interrupts. Conditional orders are a little bit different. Um, they rely on a condition instead of just by default. So fuel values um, for the task group. Um, so just be a little bit careful if you have different fuel values. Um, so these these would so these will be used for say patrol ships. This one will potentially be used for fuel tankers or um, or harvesters. Uh, parent fleet and system it will be handy for potential explorer ships stuff like that. Um, I'm sure this you can find uses for them. Subfleets in the same location is the opposite. Um, so for example, you can set subfleets in the same location and then have them. Um, incorporate subfleets in the same location. So that way, uh, if you have this set to the primary ship of a survey group, and then you give them the order to return to, um, say, the entry point, and copy the orders to subordinate fleets, the subordinate fleets fly back to the home fleet, and then the home fleet will just eat them as they actually arrive. So um, fairly handy, nice and, nice and easy. But, uh, probably not useful if you only have like two or three survey ships very handy if you have like 20 you know um current speed not equal to max if you have ships that are flying through nebula this is the order you want to use you so you have this and then you set it to change to maximum speed that way as soon as they leave the nebula they will automatically re go back up to maximum speed so this is the order you want to use in that case um, especially if it has to go back and forth through a nebula. Um, these two obviously relate to supply points and hostile active ship. Um, this one can come in handy. Um, so, for example, uh, you set it to uh, hostile active ship and system, and then um, which one would you use for that one?
maybe activate shields. So that way, as soon as the ships see a hostile target, they automatically turn the shield on. Um, or, for example, you can go to refuel at a colony, and that will make it run to a colony with fuel. Um, so it will automatically and immediately run back to back home, stuff like that. So it depends what you it depends what you actually want it to do. So um, those are the conditional orders, and this one is, is exactly the same, except it's like the primary secondary. So it'll run this one. If this one can't be completed, it'll run this one. Um, that's all fairly straightforward. Uh, this allows you to transfer a task group uh, ships between task groups directly. Um, split and divide is exactly the same thing except backwards. So split will take the selected ships and put them in a new group. Divide will take the selected ships and keep them in this group and split off the rest. Task force training button is here. So this will activate task force training and it will change to cancel task force training if task force training is on. Um, task force training obviously increases the TF training value. Um, and you trade fuel for that. So um, that covers pretty much all of that. The, the, there are some fancy things you can pull off with this. Not, you know, obviously as fancy as you can with other games or with anything as complex as scripting uh, or anything like that. But, you know, you, you can automate a substantial part of the more annoying ships that you have to work with um individual ship history um fairly straightforward very identical to the ship history of the other one um except this one gives you a bit more information um on the history so senior officer system task force commander if they're part of a task force um, officers within the task group so yeah this one essentially gives you the or the history of the task group as opposed to the ship itself um, if you have SM turned on, you can manually move it to a different position. So, um, obviously, where the capital is, hmm. capital button is still active. Oh well. Um, fleet training for uh, for average fleet training and total fleet mass, synchronous fire on and off, and transfer fleet to Empire. Uh, finally, the naval organization chart. Um, I'm going to leave this for a different section because I've already been talking about it uh, for a bit, and this thing is extraordinarily complex. Plus, I don't really have a fleet worthwhile. Um, I don't really have the ship inf infrastructure at the moment to really go into it, so I'll come back to that one and cover it later. Um, and everybody should already be aware of the orders. Um, filtering, um, location, action and the move list. Um, one, thing to, one thing to note is the order templates. Um, so if you have a bunch of orders, you can save them. And if you have the, sh the orders repetitive, you can save them and then just use them whenever you want. So instead of, for example, having a tanker uh, automate running back and forth and picking up fuel and dropping it off, you can set up the order, save the template, and then just once a year, you hit, you, you just select the tanker, hit, and select the order template, hit use, and it'll automatically run though back and forth and pick up the fuel, drop it off, stuff like that. Um, that way you can just make it a lot easier. Um, default conditions. Uh, this one is very handy. Quick grav and quick geo survey. Uh, geo does the five days, grav does the nearest. Um, so that way you can set your scouts to um, explorers to automatically run those. And it gives you the list of the current orders. Um, and of course, um, any cargo and or fuel that the ship holds is displayed here. Um, cycle moves will automatically move the completed order to the bottom of the queue. Repeat will take everything that's in here and replicate it the number of times you um, have. Order delay will, at the moment, place a delay in that many seconds at the beginning of the move however it doesn't cycle through it will only delay the very first move so if you're cycling it will only happen once um, this will be fixed in 7.2 so steve has already fixed it um, and it will actually start being incorporated in the actual order um, 
once 7.2 comes out. Um, now, a lot of people um, frequently ask, how do I make my combat fleet keep a certain distance from an enemy contact? I'll tell you how. Uh, I don't have a contact, so I use a task group. You use the follow order, you set the minimum distance from target, and hit add move. That's it. Uh, this will cause the fleet to automatically try and maintain that, that distance from the targeted uh, fleet. Uh, obviously, if it's slower, then it will not be able to do so. Uh, if it's faster, then it might jump back and forth between too far, too close, too far, too close. So if you're using this for beam ships, try and keep your um, seconds low or your speed similar to the other task groups. So um, that is important to note. Uh, maximum amount of load is useful for freighters. Who's the freighter? Freighter is... This one here. So max amount to load. So if you're loading, um, zero is unlimited or maximum cargo space. Um, otherwise, you'll need to set the maximum. So if you have a giant freighter fleet and you only want a single mass driver so that you don't take all your mass drivers from Earth and end up getting bombarded, make sure you have your max load uh, selected. Um, and you have this various automatic, various buttons that will control shields, missiles, and I think I've already covered this as well a couple of episodes ago. Okay, so that's that one. Let's keep going with... Oh, yes, terraforming is done. So now we have our lunar, which really should be a colony by now, but oh well. Um, so now we have our oxygen added in. There we are. 0.1 atmosphere of oxygen. 0.1 is the minimum that, that uh, the uh, the human race requires by default. Um, and obviously because it has no other gases, the percentage is 100%. Um, you have here the various values. So Base temperature in Celsius is based on how far away the planet is from the sun and how hot the sun is. This number will pretty much never change. The only time this number will ever change is if you have the heating or cooling disaster active. Uh, eventually, this will go up or down depending on whether it's heating or cooling. Uh, base temperature in Kelvin as well. So Celsius and Kelvin. Um, I think you can set the game somewhere to use Fahrenheit, so this might change then, but um, Kelvin is always Kelvin. Um, obviously, this is based on off of absolute zero. Greenhouse pressure, anti-greenhouse, greenhouse factor, and albedo. Albedo is only changed if the planet has a um, hydrosphere, and it's based on the state of the hydrosphere and what... Um, what state is currently in and how much it actually covers. So we have oxygen, but obviously a pure oxygen atmosphere is nowhere near capable of supporting humans, and it's also extremely cold. So what we need to do is we need to do two things. We need to reduce the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere without introducing any, th any lethal gases, and we also need to raise the temperature until, hu until humans uh, find it satisfactory. So if we go have a look at our race, um, ideal temperature is 14, the maximum deviation is 24. So you subtract 24 from 14 and you get minus 10. So the minimum temperature the, human, the humans can survive in is minus 10. Um, so we need to raise it by about 40 degrees Celsius. Um, maximum pressure is 4, but we don't have to worry about that, so that's fine, because um, we're not going to need anywhere near that much gas. So we'll get rid of that. So let's see what we have to look at. So we've got hydrogen, helium, methane, ammonia. Um, this water will not create a hydrosphere. It's just water as a gas. Um, the atmospheric water and the uh, hydrosphere are actually independent. 
Um, neon, nitrogen, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, oxygen, oh, obviously we know what oxygen is, hydrogen sulfide, argon, carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, da, 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 da. So we have a lot of gases to work with. Obviously not all of them, but a fair amount. Um, a fair amount of these are toxic, and a lot of them, uh, and they all have various different rates um, that they up, uh, that they add greenhouse pressure to. Um, but what we want to use is we want to use the safe greenhouse gas. Uh, safe greenhouse gas is non-toxic, and it provides a very powerful greenhouse pressure compared to how much atmosphere is actually in there. Right. So now we need to drop oxygen to thirty-three uh, percent, or less than th less than. Uh, well, yeah, less than 30%, okay? Uh, and we can see that because ideal oxygen is 0.2, so 20%. Max deviation is 0.1, which is 0.3. So we need um, no more than 30% uh, uh, oxygen pressure. Okay. So... So we have 0.1 atmospheres of oxygen, then we need at least 0.2 atmospheres of safe greenhouse gas. So we will use 0.25. Uh, we also need to get the temperature. So it's no good having a breathable atmosphere if the temperature is too low. And 0.5, 25 is usually good enough from Earth and Mars. So it will save, and that will start adding uh, safe greenhouse gas until it gets up to 25. And hopefully... Uh, the planet, uh, the moon, will be habitable by then. Um, what we'll do is we'll actually also assign a planetary governor. We'll see if we have one with terraforming. Terraforming, terraforming, terraforming. There she is. There we go. And who is this? Laura Van Thiel. Who is she? UX25. She's providing a mining bonus. But we need her 30% terraforming a lot more. So let's find Luna. There it is. And assign. Um, we'll, we will need to replace UX25's mining bonus. So we'll go for... Who's this? Oh no, that's what we need. Okay, that's Earth 1. So we'll keep her. And QX113. Unassigned. There we go. So Rebecca Carter will take UX25. There we go. Uh, and now we have we'll see that we have point oh seven eight. Hmm, this should have gone up a bit. With the bonus, but oh well. You know, point oh seven eight atmosphere, so it's going to take a while, but eventually we'll get to uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.25 atmosphere, and hopefully we'll have um, a habitable moon. Okay, so let's keep going. We'll do a five day jump. All right, we've got, we've got a ship building rate up to 70, 750 which is fantastic. Now we're working on shipyard operations costs. Uh, what I'll do is I'll get construction rate up to 20. I'll get mining production up to 20, shipbuilding rates to 1,000. And from there, we'll go for the research rate of, of 400. So that will help boost how much um, research points we get and help us take up faster. Uh, what's our time? 30 minutes. Okay, so um, hopefully that will uh, that covers um, um, what does it cover? Task forces. Yeah, so task forces, um, like I said, naval organization is incredibly complex and to be perfectly honest, if you can't see what's actually happening, um, 
I I don't really think I think most people will try and use it, but they don't really understand how it actually works and what it does. And if you if I if I can't show you what it's doing, I'm gonna have a seriously hard time explaining it, and you're probably not gonna get it unless you're one of those super geniuses out there. Um, so I'm going to hold off on this, and once I get a couple of combat ships, then I'll be more than happy to run you guys through and show you how it all works. Um, having this, the naval organization is extremely handy when it comes to facts, and if you want uh, corvettes and stuff like that. So, so it's extremely handy there. Um, but yeah, like I said, if I can't show you, I'm going to have a hard time explaining it myself, and it's just probably just going to confuse it all, so um, we'll leave that one alone. So yeah, hopefully uh, you've all learned something, um, and I'll probably um, make it make up to missing an episode last yes, yesterday by doing a double one today, uh, but we'll see how we go. So I'll uh, throw this one up now, and see you all next episode.